Hey guys, Spark from Denmark Bros. Time to do some more cooking. Today, we are going to try to make a sunny spinach pie. If you go on Pinterest, you'll see sunny spinach pie. It'll appear there. It's beautiful little baked. Uh, it looks like a flower. You'll see. Uh, I could probably put a picture up here. Anyways, so what we're going to start off by doing is showing you all the ingredients. There's flour, olive oil, salt, white wine, ricotta cheese, sesame seeds, breadcrumbs, parmesan cheese, and spinach. So let's start by doing the dough. Okay, so the recipe asks for 17 ounces of baking flour, all-purpose flour. That means a cup and a quarter, so in goes the flour. It also asks for one third cup of extra virgin olive oil. One third cup, here she comes. And it also asks for three quarter cups of white wine. That's a lot of wine. Okay, three quarter cups. That's better here. <clears throat> three quarter cups. White wine. And one teaspoon of salt. Teaspoon. Now, with a stand mixer, which I don't have, I only have a hand mixer, I put in the kneading uh, sticks, kneading, fong, kneading, whatever. The one that kneads. And knead the dough until everything is together. Okay, as you guys might know, depending on the humidity of the surrounding area, the temperature and all that stuff, uh, some of the baking might require a little bit more flour because the flour might already be more humid than usual. So the dough was actually very runny. So I've added maybe a quarter cup more flour just to bring the dough more to a a doughy pizza like consistency. And uh, if you come closer, Sarah, you'll see here the dough starting to look a little bit more like a regular pizza or uh, bread dough. I'll just let these things knead a little bit longer and uh, you take the dough, wrap it in saran wrap, put it in the fridge and let it cool off until we do the filling for this. Okay, now the filling consists of chopped boiled spinach. So what I did, I got a little bit lazy and got some pre-chopped, pre-boiled frozen spinach. So I let it unthaw. And right now, this is what I got. And to this mixture, I will add myself a little bit of chopped spinach just to give it a, a little bit more texture. And as you can see, the frozen stuff contains a lot of liquids. And a lot of the uh, the vitamins is actually coming out of that. Because in the frozen, at the frozen state, a lot of the vitamin stays into the, uh, the water or the liquids. And I'm just squeezing the heck of it right up. There we 
here goes all the vitamins. Okay. They asked for 12 ounce. I've got a 10 ounce bag. I will now take two ounces of fresh spinach. Okay, so here you go. I've got about two ounces here of freshly chopped spinach to which I will add to the frozen frozen bag that I had for the 10 ounces. So there. Now, to this mixture, we add uh, 12 ounces of ricotta cheese. So we add this to the spinach. The whole thing. To this mixture, we will add one egg. And to this mixture, we will also add three ounces of Parmesan cheese. This is an ounce and a half, a little shot glass, so eh, it's as good as anything else. So three ounces. Take into effect some of the spillage. There's an ounce and a half. Oh, there you go, yeah, three ounces. That's pretty darn close. <coughs> oh, we'll just leave that aside for now. Okay, mixy mixy. Now you can smell some of the Parmesan cheese, which I like to call stinky feet cheese. Mix that well. And also to this mixture, we add salt and pepper to taste. One, two, three, four, five. Pepper. I don't have cracked black. I don't have a pepper cracking machine, so I'm just taking already pre-cracked or pre-made pepper. So I'm just going to say that's about right. Uh, everybody's flavor, everybody's taste is different. Some people might like it a little bit more peppery. Um, that is all up to you. So just for you guys, one more little shot. Now you set this aside and roll out your dough. All right, so I have here a pizza pie uh, tin. So I added parchment paper to it just so that the, uh, the flour doesn't stick. What I'm going to start by doing is separating the dough in two pieces and pretty much uh, rolling it out with your pan to about the same size. Cut the dough up in two and start rolling my first, uh, first roll. The bottom part of the uh, the flower. 
what you have to try to do also is to uh, measure out the circle so that it fits within your pie. So what I've left also is I've let a little bit of dough around so that I could probably pinch or manipulate the outer side of the, uh, the flour. And as you can see, as soon as I loosen it from the table, it did shrink because it was stuck to the table. So here's our first, uh, our first layer. <clears throat> now, okay, now we go back to your mixture. What it recommends here is to take a medium sized bowl, which I find this is a little bit too big. So I might change this bowl. maybe just a small butter dish because this is going to be the middle and there's going to be another row there so I'm just going to imprint this a little bit in there just so that it gives me an idea of where to put the mixture okay so you put a mixture in the center then what you do with the rest of the mixture, you lay some around to sort of make the shape of a donut. The next step, the top layer of uh, dough. Okay, as you can see, I've got the second dough, second half of the dough, uh, rolled out approximately, I would say, to the same size as the first one. So what I'm going to do is transfer it over top of the current, the, the one that has the mixture and try to align it as close as possible as I could to the other pie. I might have to lift it up here a little bit, bring it down. <clears throat> So as you can see, it's a pretty close fit, not so bad. So now what it recommends to do is to go over top of the, the middle with your uh, which that didn't work too well, so I'm just going to go with my hands and go around the circle in the middle here. <clears throat> and kind of press down because you want to try to get these two to stick together. What I actually I should have done is made uh, an egg wash and put some down in the middle here. That was a little bit of slow thinking in my part. So I'm just going to try to squish it down as much as I could. And as you can see, this is some of the spinach mixture, and this is the other part here. So what I'm going to do is just try to glue it as close as I can here. But what I will do is I will go get a, an egg wash. <clears throat> egg wash. One egg and a little bit of water. Not too much, just a little bit. Crack the 
yolk. Mix the egg really well. Try to get the wash to be approximately the same color all the way around. What this is going to help do, it's going to do a glue to bind the, uh, the dough together. And I'm also going to use it to spray over top to, uh, to give it a golden color. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to do put a little bit of a wash between here so that the dough can bind together. Whenever it cooks, it, at least it's going to stay together and it's not going to explode if you want. I go all the way around as much as I can. There's some there. <clears throat> What I'm also going to do, I'm also going to punch the flour down to make sure there's a good seal. Okay, now to make things look pretty, I'm going to cut the excess dough that's around here and just discard that. Now what I'm going to do is transfer this almost flour to my baking, my baking dish over here. All right, so now you, now you can see that our flour has been transferred onto the the dish, and uh, a little bit of rescuing he did here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is cut this into flours. Now that all the flour is cut up, what you do is you lift up one of the ends and basically twist it over. And you go end to end and twist over. There you go. Twisted all the ends, made a beautiful flour. One of the steps that I'd like to do is to toast up some of our sesame seeds. Uh, it'll give it a little bit of color, it'll give it a lot of the, uh, the nutty taste. So I've got an oven going at high heat. I'm going to put some sesame seeds into the pan. And toast the seeds. Okay, as you can see here, I've toasted up my sesame seeds and I'm going to use that as a garnish on top of the flour. So we're going to come back here to our flour and I'm going to egg wash it all over. It's going to help with the, uh, the seeds sticking to it as well as help it become a nice golden brown. Now for the coloring. Add a little bit to the petals. You add a lot more to the center to make it look like a sunflower. And there you have it. Okay, now that your spinach pie is fully assembled into a 350 degree 
Fahrenheit oven or 180 degrees Celsius. Oh, I forgot the pans. Typical newbie error. Yeah, that's gonna be hot. All right, once again, 350 degree oven, 30 minutes, see you in a while. Okay guys, it's been 30 minutes, the oven just beeped. Here we go. Our nice little flower, actually that's pretty cute. As you can see, there are going to be separate pieces. Purdy. Hey, we're at the in-laws and we're going to try out the uh, sunny spinach pie. Sarah's going to pull a piece off there. Just grab and pull. There we go. Alrighty. Not bad. What's the texture? What's the taste? Uh, it tastes like spinach and Parmesan cheese. The ricotta doesn't... Uh, mm, not so much. Okay. Try a piece. So I guess this, uh, this flour could be done with pretty much any filling that you want. Uh, if you don't care for spinach so much, you could put anything uh, that your heart desires. Uh, I might actually try it with a pierogi style dough uh, filling. Well, but this is good and I, I wouldn't uh, have thought spinach was tasting so good. Yeah. So basically overall, uh, thumbs up. I would say so. Excellent. There you go. Sunny spinach pie. Mm. Me and Mimi are going to be trying Melinda's coffee barbecue sauce. Oh, wow. That was just... Good try to